John, I was very interested to learn that Bournemouth has been voted the sexiest town in Britain. Were you interested? I was interested to, to hear that, and I was very interested to hear that uh, Hugh Hefner, uh, who ran Playboy, has moved to Bournemouth now. <laughs> and um, I'm going over to the satellite now to talk to the man who's talking to Hugh. Hi there, my name is Bob Crabfoot Tree, and uh, I'm talking to Hugh Hefner about where he's starting with the bodies that are old but not cold. Hugh, can you take us through what's happening here in Bournemouth? Well, what uh, is happening in Bournemouth now is, um, for years I was attracted to very young women. I was a very intellectual man. I'd sit in a jacuzzi looking at big bazoombas for 40 years. And, <laughs> and then I realized maybe I should be shifting my drift to an older age group. So uh, the photograph we're doing here is the, the bunny crone. This is uh, Mrs. Enid Hebblethwaite. She's 83 years of age. And uh, we're just going to, um, Enid... Uh, when you when you lean forward in that Zimmer frame, can you maybe just get a <laughs> get that sort of rhubarb colored cable knit cardigan, cut a back a bit, you know, and uh <laughs> do, do you still want me to sing the hokey cokey? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sing the the hokey cokey. can we do that on air? Hokey coke? Sure, why not? The hokey cokey is an England tune from uh, England and Thames. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> you do that and lift yourself forward and let's hear those hips creak. <laughs> let's hear them creak and uh, I think it'll work. I think it'd be very good if uh, Hugh takes over Bournemouth. <laughs> well, there are there are other yeah. big stories uh, this week. Uh, mm. Genetic engineering is rearing its head again. I yeah. see. And couples can can choose the sex of their baby. Yes, indeed. I mean, in, and of course, California. This is uh, where it's really happening. I mean, things are happening like uh, people are saying, uh, "Yeah, with your baby, um, what we do here is uh, very simple. If you live in Clearwater Canyon, I know you've been there, Clive, or Topango or Laurel. What we do, we got a small baby artifact here. We've got a sandpaper." <laughs> A sandpaper region on its butt, right? And we can just <laughs> leave it on the canyon for hours, you know. You can even leave it on a cliff face. That babe won't fall, right? <laughs> and, of course, irony has been removed at a very early age. We take the baby, we make sure its eyes have that sort of non-blinking Vanessa Redgrave look, you know, and just <laughs> stare in space forever and ever. And when you wash them down, none of this cuddly soapy stuff in the bath and all that bullshit, you know, you just get that babe, give it a polyurethane skin, light it in the driveway next to your Range Rover, you just hose that babe, you know, just hold it down. <laughs> and uh, maybe dangle some crystals in front of its head. I mean, we have problems, we've got a lot of worries, a lot of worries about babies, you know, when they're small, they're so uninteresting in the way that Californians aren't when they grow up, you know, they become really fascinating, <laughs> very fascinating people. But uh, with a baby, you see, they do need a psychiatrist very early on, you know, four months, five months, they've got problems. They've got shit in there, you know, and up <laughs> there, you know, they've got shit they've got to get out, you know. We've got to dig that stuff out of their soul. You know, five months in, you don't know, you maybe have seen a rusk that you thought looked like a battleship. It happens, you know. Genetic engineering can, can, bring, bring, can bring hope to mankind. Absolutely. I mean, I mean they, they, they say they may be able to cure baldness by genetic engineering. Really? Well, I think, I think near baldness is a very good thing. I think the, uh, a great near bald figure to become with the aid of genetic engineering, you know, the next time you go to the bank or whatever and you're talking to Mr. Pargerit, you know, the bank manager, and you want a loan, it'd be very nice halfway through the conversation when he's being difficult and observing the fact that you did take a loan out the previous year. If you were suddenly turned into Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> Every time you're there, you just stare at him, <laughs> frighten him. <laughs> well, I might consider a loan. I'll just have to take a look at my books. <laughs> that would be very nice. <laughs> <laughs> or I might consider eating the Midland Bank with some father. <laughs> you know. Or even if a Jeho Jehovah's Witness came to the door or something, you know, and tells Hello, I wear a 1950s hat. I, I live as if Jerry Lewis never died, and I'm stuck in that age. This is a small leaflet that's very badly printed. You see a train come down a cliff and falling over, and halfway through the conversation, they put on into Chris Eubank. Because one bore meets another bore. Yeah. Now, did I ever tell you about why I fought the world? No, 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 really, I've got to go now. No, no, listen to me. Listen to me. I've got a very, very fascinating thing to tell you. Many years ago, I decided that this and this was a very groovy thing to do. No, no, I gotta go now. I gotta go. No, don't go. Live on. Live on. I think it'd be good to turn into Chris when those guys show up. It'd be good. Branson. Mm. Richard Branson's yes. uh, very rarely out of the news. Lovely teeth. I, I, he has excellent teeth. Mm. And, uh, genetic engineering. He smiles all the time, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. All the time. <laughs> Richard, your house has been burned down and you're being turned into a tree. <laughs> he wouldn't mind, you know. He's in the news again this week with, uh, he's uh, got another big uh, money spinning deal. And oh, apparently, how unusual. Well, apparently, yeah. apparently on Virgin flights, well, I'm sure you've been on a Virgin flight. I have. Yeah. Uh, apparently now that people come along and try to sell you cars while you're on the plane. Yes, I, I could imagine that, you know. Would you like a drink freshened? Oh, no, thank you. Would you like a car? <laughs> <laughs> if you fill in this form here, we'll feed you. If you buy this very expensive car with a roof rack, 
then we'll feed you. <laughs> oh, can't I just be fed? No, have a car. <laughs> Richard's here to persuade you. Hello. <laughs> it's like Jaws, isn't it? You know. <laughs> I'm just going for a swim. OK, I'll come and join you when I'm not too pissed. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, uh, the Loch Ness Monster is about to be got in touch with by a French guy who says he can get in touch with Loch Ness Monsters by <laughs> mental telepathy. <laughs> yes, uh, one can imagine the scene. Uh, do you see it's over there, Mr. Rob Grier, sitting out in the loch. <laughs> now, some people might say I'm a boring old bastard, <laughs> but I can tell you this for nothing, and I've told all sorts of folk, I've told all the famous folks, that Clive Anderson, that Clive James, and you know, a city, all the big folks. <laughs> I said, you see that that's new out there, that's rubbish. It's there. I know it well. I'm French, I'm arrogant. <laughs> I'll find it. <laughs> I'll find out what the Loch Ness Monster is thinking about at the moment. Come, ça va? Come, ça va? Do you want some, do you want some jam in your scone? Or what? No, no. Bouge-toi, bouge-toi. Allez. Allez. Merci. <laughs> Merci. Entendez, entendez, à moi. Oui, that's impossible. He's gonna be the lockiest one says French, you bastard. It's even wearing a berry. It's even being rude to English people. That is right. I am a French monster. For years and years, I came over here with Mary, Queen of Scouts. I come over here, I sit in your lock long. No lock long. Lock nasty, you stupid French bastard. <laughs> John, I feel that you've told me things about the news that, that no normal man would know. Uh, well, I'm not a normal <laughs> man. No, you probably know I'm a member of the Traction Engine that met Elvis Society. <laughs> Thank you very much, John Sergeant. Mm -hmm.